hi and hello everyone. What we will do next is the continuous time Markov chains and the basic properties and the basic ideas that we need from this particular concept because this is what is ultimately we need when we start our QE analysis like whatever we did in discrete time Markov chain and Poisson process both of them like will lead to this particular thing that we are doing here is continuous time Markov chain and this is what directly like we are going to use it as a model for all our uh, queuing systems like because things that we are going to deal with it is in going to be in continuous time state is discrete. So, what we are having here is this continuous time Markov chain is what then practically will be applied in our queuing analysis. So, that is what we are coming. So, whatever we did in discrete time Markov chain we will see that now we are uh, transferring those results to the continuous time version of them. Okay. So, what is continuous time Markov chain? Here the state space is discrete whereas the parameter space is now becomes continuous. So, we will transfer the results from discrete time which is basically DTMC or simply MC Markov chain to CTMC. Now, first, first let us define what do we mean by uh, continuous time Markov chain. So, we define S naught equal to 0 and let S n for n greater than or equal to 1, S naught is 0, S n denote a sequence of random variables such that they are increasing, strictly increasing in, in some sense, right. S n is strictly greater than S n minus 1 for all n greater than or equal to 1 and S n tends to infinity as n tends to infinity, right. So, basically S naught is 0 and then there is one S 1, then S 2, S 3 and so on is what then you are having. This is a sequence that you have here. This is sequence of random variables. Further, let X n, n greater than or equal to 0 be a sequence of random variables taking values in a countable state space. So, this X n is again a sequence of random variable and they are taking values in some countable state space, right, okay. So, this uh, stochastic process yt which we define yt to be equal to xn for t lies between sn and sn plus 1 where sn is included uh, t is less than or equal to sn but strictly less than sn plus 1 which means starting from sn until up to S n plus 1, but not including S n plus 1. For all those t, the process y t right, would be equal to simply X n, right. Whatever this value the X n is, y t also will be taking that particular value for all t in this. So, here t is now continuous, right. Now, such a process y t is what is will be called as a pure jump process, right jump does not always mean an upward jump, it could be also a downward jump, anything it can be, right. So, that is what uh, it will turn out to be. So, this is the yt process. So, the random variables t n which is s n plus 1 minus s n, remember this is strictly greater than 0. So, this is strictly greater than 0, s n plus 1 minus s n which is what you call t n is called the nth holding time and this x n is called the nth state of the process y t. Okay. So, this x n is called the nth state of the process and this t n is called the nth holding time of the uh, process of process here we mean this pure jump process that we are talking about here. Now, if further if we assume this x n which we are taking to be any sequence is a Markov chain with a stationary transition probability matrix P and the variables T n which is just the difference of this S n plus 1 minus S n, they are all independent and exponentially distributed with parameter lambda suffix X n meaning only depending on the state X n. Okay. Then this Y t is called a time homogeneous is homogeneous time homogeneous continuous time Markov chain. Okay. 
So, a pure jump process if it satisfies this first part of this definition. Now, in addition, if this Xn's is a Markov chain and this Tn's are exponential with parameter lambda Xn, meaning it depends only on the state of the process at time n. Then this Yt is called a continuous time Markov chain and this particular chain Xn would then be called as an embedded Markov chain of the CTMC. So, this is what is called an embedded Markov chain of the CTMC. So, if I look at how the path will look like in, in a particular, uh, so it starts at uh, say at some point of time it will start at 0, okay. So, at some point of time, right, so this will start at 0 and it will move to somewhere and it will remain here and at other point it will move here like this is another point, this is another point of transition where it might move here, right starting from here and including here and so on. So, this is how the path of a typical process would a continuous time Markov chain will look like in this particular case, right. So, we will always assume that this supremum of this one, these quantities is bounded, right, because you know you remember that this is all exponential and this is the parameter. If this parameter is infinity, if it is not finite, then you know what it means it is because the mean, right, or you could talk the parameter lambda, mean is 1 over lambda and what happens in that particular case, okay. So, to avoid that, you know, we will always assume that, you know, this the maximum of all these lambda i's, one for each state of the uh, process, right, they are all finite, right. So, the supremum is finite means each one of them is uh, finite is what then you are assuming. So, they are some finite values that is what you know we are assuming that to avoid any of the uh, trivial cases that you know we might encounter in this particular case. So, this is what is a continuous time Markov chain. Now, a CTMC moves from state to state just like a DTMC, but the time spent in each state is now an exponential random variable, right. It is not uh, otherwise it is exponential random variable is what then we are making it here. Note that if i is not an absorbing state, we can assume that the single step transition from state i back to itself is not allowed. So, that means, p i i is equal to 0. What will happen if i is an absorbing state? If i is an absorbing state, then p i i would be equal to 1 and in this case my lambda i would be equal to 0 right, because it is not going to go out of the state, right. So, that is what it would mean. So, it would be in that particular state forever. So, for an absorbing state, this lambda i would be equal to 0, right. The process y t satisfies the Markov property in continuous time, Markov property in continuous time. What does that mean? That means, this property to hold, right. Remember, this is much like your discrete time case that what you have here. So, the, but this is now for the continuous time. So, this property or this equality is true about this conditional probabilities uh, is true for all states in S and for all time points T naught T 1 T n and for all n greater than or equal to 1. If this property is true, then we say Y t is a Markov process. Of course, one can define Markov process straight away as if satisfying this. But for us, you know, it is defining through an embedded Markov chain idea, taking DTMC to move to CTMC is more useful from our viewpoint. So, we have taken that route. Otherwise, one can define directly as uh, a process satisfying the Markov property is what would be a Markov process in general. So, this is discrete state, continuous time. So, this is continuous time Markov chain is what then one would define. Okay. So, this satisfies this Markov property which in this particular case is equal to this. Now, this quantity, right, probability of y t equal to j given y t n equal to i, right, is what is now the transition probabilities, right, of moving from i to j from time t n to t. So, in general for any s less than t, now, the transition probability matrix which we can call it as P s comma t from time s to t by its entries P i j of s t which means this particular thing. At time s it is in state i and at time t it is in state j what is the probability of this is what this will give you 
and this they satisfy this property right uh, time invariant in some sense like where this s is located is not relevant the difference is what is relevant is what then you, you would see here uh, because of this homogeneous nature of the, the marco chain right and hence we can restrict 0 to t minus s we can simply call it as p of t for this notation so this is the notation we pay attention to p of t so from now onwards whenever we say p of t what we mean actually is p 0 comma t which would be same as p s and p s comma s plus t right for any s that is what it is actually for a homogeneous Markov chain. So, this is what is the quantity of interest the transition probability matrix instead of this one can look at this p of t. Now, with this notation the Markov property yields the chapman kolmogoro equation which is of this form in this particular case right is similar to what you would have seen in discrete time Markov chain. Probability at time s plus t is probability at s and multiplied by probability in time t because of this ideas that we have here right and p of 0 is i and rows of p of t sum to 1 much like the DTMC case right. One thing that you need to remember here is this part continuous time Markov chain and the embedded Markov chain. Embedded Markov chain is a Markov chain a discrete time Markov chain that we extract out of this continuous time Markov chain at the times of transitions at the time of transitions is what you would get this embedded Markov chain which is what this XNs are that is what you know you need to remember. Now, let us take a couple of examples you define Xn to be n for n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on then Xn is a Markov chain with state space 0, 1, 2, 3 transition probabilities P n to n plus 1 is 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0 and let the holding times T n be I i d exponential with parameter lambda right. So, we are assuming X n is a Markov chain right with the transition probabilities P n to n plus 1 is equal to 1 and all other transition probabilities are 0 right and the holding times in each state is I i d exponential with a constant parameter lambda then the stochastic process y t which we define to be this y t equal to x n for t lies between s n and s n plus 1 is a continuous time Markov chain with state space s and this is what is known as the Poisson process with rate lambda or intensity or parameter whatever you call this is a Poisson process with rate lambda. So, here this is the Markov chain and this is the transition probabilities right and T n here is I i d exponential with a constant parameter lambda then what you get is a Poisson process right. So, if you want to you know put the Poisson process in the framework of your CTMC then this is what is the description that you would get for Poisson process. We can also another one that a two state continuous time Markov chain let us take states to be 0 and 1 ok and assume that the holding parameters right they are all exactly same as you know because for Markov chain it needs to be exponential. So, in each of these states at 0 at 1 both of them are equal to lambda which is strictly greater than 0. So, since lambda is strictly greater than 0 so none the states are not absorbing and so we do not allow self transition. So, the transition probability matrix of this embedded Markov chain would be this one P 0 1 and 1 0. Now, we will determine what is this transition probabilities right because for Markov chain this transition probabilities is what is relevant right. So, this transition probability starting with P 0 0 of t because there will be 4 quantities of this right P 0 0 of t, P 0 1 of t, P 1 0 of t, P 1 1 of t there will be 4 quantities. So, let us start with P 0 0 t. Now, assume that y 0 is 0 which means it starts at time 0 it is 0 that is what this first 0 would mean this y 0 is 0. Y t will be in 0 right if and only if we have an even number of transitions in the time interval 0 to t right. Suppose if the transition takes place where it will be so suppose this is 0 right. 
So, this is 0, this is 1, this is 0, this is 1, the states, right. Now, 0 to 1, 0 to 0 it is not possible. So, in the next step it will move to 1 and for it to come back to 0 at by time t, there has to be another transition from 1 to 0. So, the in even number of transition for sure that it will be back to 0. So, you have to, so starting from y0 equal to 0, yt will be in, in 0 if we have an even number of transitions. Either by time t there is no transition happen, so it is 0, right? Or it can be two transitions. If in one transition only has happened, then definitely the process cannot be in state 0 at time t, right? But by time t, if there are two transitions, exactly two transition happens, then it will be in state 0, right? Because in one, one it will go from 0 to 1 and the next step it will come from 1 to 0, so it will be in 0 by time t. If it is three transitions happened by time t, exactly three transitions, then definitely the process will not be in state 0, it will be processed in state 1, right? If it is 4 transition happens, then the process will come back to state 0. So, even number of transition it should happen in order for that by yt this process will be in 0 here, right. So, so in this interval, so the time between each transition is an exponential lambda random variable and thus the transition occur according to a Poisson process with parameter lambda. So, we can write down p00 of t is the probability of even number of transition in 0 to t would be given by this expression right the sum with respect to the even numbers from the Poisson distribution. So, that will give me this expression as p 0 0 of t is equal to half times plus half, ti half times of e to the power minus 2 lambda t is what you will get as the probability of starting from 0 and being at 0 at time t is probability of this is this. Now, by symmetry p 1 1 of t because both lambda naught lambda 1 is equal to 0 for easiness, right. Otherwise, then there will be more complex things here. Uh, so, p 1 1 will be also equal to p 0 0 of t and p 1 0 of t are 0 1 of t, right. When rho sum is equal to 1, you can use to arrive at this quantity or to arrive at this quantity, right. So, and hence my p of t would then be equal to this matrix, right? This is what would be the transition probabilities that you know I have for this particular Markov chain. Uh, that's what you know. You would, if you know this, then at any point of time, what is the probability that you know you will starting from particular state where you will be there? You know you can compute the corresponding probabilities and to obtain the corresponding probabilities. Observe that in the limit, what you are going to get is this matrix of all halves. We will come back to this and the behavior. Much like DTMC, like this is also what we will be looking at in the later stages, right. So, so this CTMC, so far based on our definition, is characterized by these quantities, right. What are the quantities? This Pij's and lambda i's, right. For each state 1, so this lambda i is what then you have and Pij's. So, if I know Pij's and lambda i's, then I have you know parameterized the CTMC by these quantities. Alternatively, a CTMC can be parameterized by this matrix Q, which we call QIJs, which is called as generator matrix or infinitesimal generator or simply rate matrix, uh, different name, but all of them are mean the same. Simply a rate matrix or generator matrix is what then would be referring to. And this is defined as q i j is equal to minus lambda i for i is equal to j, which means q i i is minus lambda i and q i j is lambda i times p i j for i not equal to j for all i j in s. This is how you define this q i j, right. Now, look at if y is of 0 is i, right, the process starts at the state i then the chain will move to the next state at time t1, which will be exponentially distributed with parameter lambda i, right, because the currently the process is in state i. So, the, uh, the holding time is exponential with parameter lambda i. So, this will move to the next state at 
this particular time after expiry of this particular time. Now, for small delta t greater than 0, what would be this probability? Probability of t1 is less than delta t because t1 is exponential with parameter lambda i. So, it's this is effectively the distribution function, right? From distribution function, you can write it down. The distribution function is 1 minus e to the power minus lambda t, right? Lambda i t in this particular case and t is here delta t, so that is delta t. So, if you expand that, this will be approximately equal to lambda i times delta t. That means, the probability of leaving state i in a short interval of length delta t is approximately equal to lambda i times delta t. For this reason, lambda i is often called the transition rate out of state i that is the expected number of transitions per unit of time. right? So, this is the lambda i is the transition rate out of state i. Formally, we can define lambda i to be probability that at particular time delta t, uh, you know, if given that at time 0, if it is in i, then after delta t, this will not be in i as delta t downs to 0. So, 0 plus means it is with delta t decreasing to 0 for well. Right? You have this as the limit, that is what limit is what is called as this lambda i. Now, seeing the chains move from state i to j with probability p i j, we call this probability the interpretation we are looking at it, right? q i i, which is basically minus times lambda i, where lambda i is what is the rate of transition out of state i. And this q i j, right, which is lambda i p i j is basically the transition rate from state i to j because this is the rate out of state i and p i j is the probability of going from i to j. So, this q i j which is lambda i times p i j is the rate of transition from state i to state j. So, this is the i j th entry of this uh, matrix q for i not equal to j. Right? This is the this is a interpretation or the meaning these are all rate that is why this is called as rate matrix. Right? So, the diagonal elements of this matrix q are such that the rows of q sum to 0 that is q i i is basically minus times q i j for j not equal to i. So, q i j is minus so lambda i times p i j. So, that is what you know you are written down here and this will be equal to minus lambda i this holds for all i if lambda i equal to 0 then this quantity is obviously equal to 0. If lambda is strictly greater than 0, that means p i i equal to 0 and hence this sum will be equal to 1. So, you will end up with minus lambda i. Right? Now, for small delta t based on our earlier approximation of lambda i that we have given, we can obtain p i i of delta t as approximately equal to 1 plus q i i of delta t. Right? for i in s and p i j of delta t as q i j of delta t. That is the relationship between this q i i's and p i i's which is basically comes from this and this interpretation that we are giving it here. So, starting from i remaining in i i in an interval length of delta t is approximately will be equal to this because moving out is lambda i right q i i is minus lambda i. So, that is what you know you will get here because that is moving out. So, being in is 1 minus of q i i is we know actually minus lambda i. So, you put it 1 minus lambda i delta t because lambda i delta t is the probability of moving out 1 minus lambda i delta t is probability of being in state i right that is what you will get here and for p i j of delta t it is q i j of delta t that is what is precisely this right. So, more precisely we can state this together as q as p of delta t minus i divided by delta t as delta t down to 0 in the limit is what is your q. So, the relationship between this p and q. Now, the reason for q is you will be known uh, quickly see soon. Q plays a similar rule for CTMC as P minus A plays for a DTMC. DTMC, what you know? It is pi equal to pi P, right? So, this can be written as P minus I pi, right, equal to 0, right? 
So, this way you can write. So, this p minus i whatever the role that it, it played here in the case of uh, discrete time Markov chain right this q plays that role here in the case of CTMC okay. For example, in the stationary equation because this is what is the stationary equation in the case of discrete time Markov chain and this is what you will get from here. So, q was determined from lambda i from p i j right. So, that is what we define. So, q because we characterize CTMC in terms of lambda i and p i j. Now, using this now q we have determined right. Now, alternatively the, if these two same thing only we are doing in the reverse way that if you know lambda i and p i j can be determined from this q i j s if you know q i j s up front via the reverse equation which is lambda i is basically sum of j not equal to i of all the quantities q i j s right. So, which basically the off diagonal uh, I mean the leaving out the diagonal entries so the remaining entries if you sum you will get this quantity this quantities are all non negative that is what you know you will see then p i j will be q i j divided by this particular sum which is lambda i right this is lambda i is what then you would see here ok. So, th this is what then uh, you know you, you, you can determine if you know one lambda i p i j you can de 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 decide what is q. If you know q i j s then you can determine what is lambda i p i j using this ok. Why do we need this because you know most of the time you know we would specify in terms of q i j and if you want the corresponding holding times at a particular state or the embedded Markov chains transition probabilities then you simply have to use this particular uh, expressions. So, this is important right. So, you have to remember and you should know exactly how one can move from q i j to this one because we will be interested in getting to know what is the embedded Markov chain transition probabilities. So, you, what you have to do you have to simply calculate this and the holding times in a particular state would be this quantity because of course, this lambda is what is coming out here in the uh, denominator right of uh, when you are computing this transition power. So, this is important. So, you remember that this quantity is important here. So, you just remember this ok. So, this uh, how we can represent this much like in the discrete time cases like the i j the entry of q uh, is called the infinitesimal transition rate from state i to j or simply rate of moving from state i to j. So, a state transition rate diagram or simply rate diagram here in the discrete time Markov chain we said transition probability diagram, but here it will be transition rate diagram or simply rate diagram for a continuous time Markov chain is again is a directed graph where the nodes represent the states and the edges represents now the transition rates q i j for i not equal to j. The values q i i are not shown because they are implied by the other values right because the rho sum equal to 1. So, the remaining values are implied by the other values. So, as in a DTMC this is also a very useful tool here and then we will use this essentially because the models will be specifying in terms of this rate diagram only as like here. Say for example, a Poisson process you have states as 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on the process will keep moving from state 0 to state 1 after an exponential distributed time. From 1 it will move to state 2 after exponential distributed time which is same as this lambda and so on. So, this is how will be the, the transition rate diagram and what will be the q matrix? The q matrix will be this the row sums are all equal to 0, the diagonal entries right the negative of the diagonal entries would be the sum of all the other elements in that particular row that is what we have defined right. So, this lambda is what will be depicted here this minus lambda is not depicted here because that is implied by the other quantities here right. So, this is what is the Poisson process one this is the Q matrix and this is the transition rate diagram. Similarly, for the two state CTMC that we have seen we know that what is the q here right q is here because it it stays here in a particular state right uh, say 0 for an exponential amount of time with parameter lambda. So, that is what this represent and again it states he it stays here with uh, 
uh, an exponential amount of time with rate lambda. So, that is what this lambda is. Now, if these two are different, this is lambda 0, then this quantity will be lambda 0, this quantity will be lambda 1 if they are different. Then accordingly here minus lambda naught, lambda naught, here it is lambda 1 minus lambda 1, rho sum will be equal to 0 would be the nature of this q. right? So, that is what the previous two examples. So, in this case what is the, the embedded Markov chain transition probabilities you know. We have already written down p which is 0, 1, 1, 0 is the matrix corresponding to this. Corresponding to this matrix it is basically the, the, the transition, the embedded Markov chains uh, TPM would be only these entries, the you know the upper diagonal entries will have everything as ones. That is all would be the TPM corresponding embedded Markov change TPM, right. That is what you know you should remember and which you can relate through this idea as well, right. You can easily see that that is what is happening here, okay. Now, these transient probabilities we need to determine this uh, you know Pijt or P of t and how do they determine, right. We have to solve for this Pij of t and these transition probabilities satisfy a system of differential equations given by this or this. Okay. Now, this quantity is what is known as Kolmogorov forward equations, this quantity is and this quantity, this system of equation is known as Kolmogorov backward equations. Now, how did we obtain this? You recall the Poisson process idea right and uh, this is t okay this is further this is t and this is d plus delta t you have the chapman golmogorov equations for continuous time markov chain right right if you are looking at the chapman golmogorov equations from what is that you know you recall where is that okay right this is the chapman golmogorov equations for time point s plus t in terms of s and t right now this quantity if you divide this 0 to t plus delta t as 0 to t and t plus delta t right delta t is a very small uh, interval of length time and write down the chapman kolmogorov equation right and then whatever you did for the poisson process case that's what we said for the state probabilities whatever operation that we did that what can happen in 1, uh, 2 or whatever is the case. So, exactly the rate is what then you will get. So, here you are dividing the interval 0 to t and t plus delta t to obtain this forward Kolmogorov equations. Uh, you do the similar operations i to j right from i to k and k to j. Now, this k to j is in an infinite semal uh, interval of length delta t and hence the corresponding probabilities would be substituted by its rates q k j s right. This will remain as this portion. Okay. So, moving from i to j in a time interval of length t right you consider t to t delta t and then take its limit delta t tends to 0 to arrive at this particular system of equations right. And exactly the same thing if it is 0 to delta t and delta t to t plus delta t if you do then what you will get is basically this uh, backward equations, we will be mostly using forward Kolmogorov equations in all our analysis. So, we will be handling with this kind of thing. So, in matrix notation, I can write this as in this form p dash of t as p of t times q for this and p dash t equal to q times p t for this backward equation with p of 0 equal to i here. Okay. Now, this matrix equation can be solved to obtain a solution which is given by p of t is equal to e to the power q t, where e to the power q t means this particular expression, where q to the power n denoting the nth power of q. And p of 0 is i, that is what you get this constant which is i is here. So, this is the, this is called as matrix exponential. Now, like there are, there is a whole lot of theory of how to compute a matrix exponential for a particular case. But whatever it is, in our case, the theory tells that p of t is given by this. Now, Remember what we wanted to compute, we want to compute P of t for a Markov chain. If you want to know completely about Markov chain, then you want to know about P of t. Now, P of t as opposed to getting it for every t, you have to compute it. The computation can be done if you know q in terms of this, right. 
if you know q then you take this right to get the uh, p of t that's what is the advantage of using with q so this q uniquely determine all transition matrices because p all transition matrices is p of t for every t once you know q you know this so you can de describe in terms of in terms of p of t or equivalently in terms of q without any time dependency there okay so sctmc is then completely determined by the transition matrices and the initial distribution is what then and that t of t is determined by this q in turn now you can also define p i of t where this is the state probabilities of finding the process in uh, at time t in the state i as the probability that ctmc is in state i at time t and if you make this as a vector with the entries p i t which is state probabilities then we can characterize this state probabilities as well by a system of differential equations which are also forms of this forward and backward kolmogorov kolmogorov equations earlier which is exactly same as this but now this p of t is basically is the state probabilities right rather than the transition probabilities right and this is what precisely we did for the poisson process case that we have did earlier the system of differential difference equation is nothing but this quantity this forward kolmogorov equation is what we have obtained there so this is in general for a ctmc so given q and p not we can solve for this state probabilities from this one that's what is the ultimate uh, the final story that you have now if you want to know the state probabilities right you need what you need is q and the initial distribution okay now quickly we will go through this uh, example which is we call it as birth death process with yt is a ctmc yt on this particular state space of non negative integers now in which the state transitions occur either increase in the system by 1 which is we call it as a birth or decrease the system by 1 which is called a death so the generator matrix in this particular case for this bdp is basically when it is in state 0 there can only birth can happen and there is no death can happen so this is what would be the first row so this diagonal entry will be minus lambda not whereas if it is in state 1 so for example this particular case is basically state 0 1 2 2 and so on this is state 1 0 1 2 3 2 and so on is what is the what are the states now when it is in state 1 a birth can happen to to make the process go to state 2 or a death can happen to make the process to go to 0 with rates mu 1 and lambda 1 correspondingly like for the birth is lambda 1 for the death it's mu 1 and hence the diagonal entry would be this quantity and so on so similarly for the other states so this is what the lambda i is what we call it as a birth rate and the death rate is what we call it as mu i so in other words if you want to write this q01 it is lambda not which is minus q not not and q i to i plus 1 is lambda i i to i minus 1 is mu i q i i is this and q i j is equal to 0 for all other values in terms of the transition rate diagram i can represent this bdp in this form this is the most important process that to start our analysis of queuing system is the birth death process so this is what is the transition rate diagram from 0 it can move to state 1 with rate lambda not so these are all rates now no probabilities here so the system of differential difference equation for the system state probabilities which is what you know we call it as p dash t p of t times q now for this particular q this will turn out to be this equation and this equation if i just use this q and write it as in this form or you can obtain from basic principles just like what we obtained for a uh, poisson process case by considering the 0 to t plus delta t and 0 to t and t plus delta t you will obtain exactly by the same argument in this this system of equations this is the fundamental set of equation that we are dealing with this so many queuing systems can be represented as bdps where the system state denotes the number of customers in the system at t for example the simpler one the mm1 q is a bdp with lambda i equal to lambda and mu i equal to mu for all i a birth death process is called a pure birth process if 
mu i equal to 0 and also it is called pure death process if lambda i equal to 0 for all i. Now, a Poisson process is also a special case of BDP where lambda i equal to lambda and mu i equal to 0 since this is also a special case of a Buth Perth process. Recall that we derived the forward Kolmogorov equation for the system from the basic principles in the case of Poisson process which can also be uh, done here. Alternatively, you can take this equation and apply this quantities there to arrive at the same set of equations, right? That is what you know you will do uh, if you obtain if you want to obtain the Poisson process case. Anyway, we will continue more in the next lecture. So, let me stop here at this point of time. Thank you. Bye.